Hi, I'm Coy Jondro here with Red Carpet Report, and I'm on the set of Runaways Season 2 with the entire enormous ensemble cast and the producers to talk about everything that's to come on December 21st, and oh, I'm excited. So, Season 2 drops on December 21st, Yes, and it will be bingeable. It will be yes. bingeable. Was that a decision after Season 1, before Season 1? Did that happen? That was an evolving conversation as Hulu continues to kind of figure out how they want to roll stuff out. Uh, although, early on, there was some clamor online of like, I'm a millennial. This show is for me. <laughs> We're used to getting everything we want, when we want it. What is this nonsense that I have to wait a week for an episode? That's so, actually very fun. I haven't put together it's a young adult show and it's the only one. You're like, I have to have patience? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, no patience required this year. Sure. Got all 13 episodes. Uh, you can avoid your family through the holidays <laughs> and, uh, or watch it with your family. Yeah, I, I think it's a, the family aspect of the show is the really, family really show. interesting. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So this is one of the – I've been telling the, the Pride, this is one of the first shows where I felt like I identified with the parents more than the kids. <laughs> Us too. When, when you got the sides and when this was in the development process, how important was it for you to make sure the villains were as believable as the kids? Because Marvel does that so well. Was that part of the shaping of the show? Yeah, for sure it was. I mean, partly it came from us just being older yeah. than we are were when we started writing young adults. Yeah. Um, but also wanting to have great villains that had complicated backstories and interesting dynamics with each other and might be justifying things because they felt like they were doing what was best for their families. Yeah, I felt like it created more drama, more stakes. It made the runaway stories more compelling if they were turning their back on parents who did love them. Right. Um, and if they were leaving behind a, a family and a home life that was loving and supportive, even if on the side, their parents were sacrificing runaway teenagers. As long as it's on the side. Yeah, it's on the side. It stays, uh, you know, at the office. But th we love you. Yeah. Now, the books are incredible. I love Brian K. Vaughan. Yep. I was yeah. a diehard fan before. That's why the, the stakes were really high for me as a human going like, I don't know about this. Us too. Us too. So Same. the Wilders in particular for me stand out as being like, they're this thing in the book and they're so different on the show mm -hmm. but they still feel like the wilders a lot of the parents have uh this nuance and flexibility in mm -hmm. them that it's harder to translate in the comic it is and i think you know brian talks about this a lot because obviously he was a big part of our he's a big part of our room every year at the beginning of the season and so it was a big part of our initial conversations um that they just didn't have the space right. when they were doing the comic to invest in those parent stories and they thought when they were doing that comic they were getting canceled yeah every issue every, that yeah. came out so they were just blowing through story as fast as they could and all the parents were kind of dead by the end of the first, right, right. first volume and we wanted to be able to you know tell that story of kids versus parents uh hopefully longer than that yeah and and that required really being able to invest in and build out those parent characters while making sure as they do in the beginning of season two get their hands dirty and remind everybody these are not nice people all the time they can't be too likable or they're not the villains exactly. exactly you guys walking that line has been really incredible it's uh like breaking bad that that evolution of walter white where you're like i have to yeah. still love him we'll take that yeah. comparison I mean, yeah. sure, any day of the week yeah having having a character that evil by the end be like but we so remember that episode and i felt like uh, each of the parents have had their moment of remember that thing they did totally when yeah. you plotted the show bible did you make sure to keep an eye on sprinkling in redemption moments and then subverting those yeah, definitely. And I think the beginning of season two, uh, people will really feel that of like a real pull of like, oh, it's hitting these parents so hard that their their kids are gone. But also they do a couple things that they're going to have a hard time walking back. And this show is extremely dark for a young adult show. And uh, I don't know. There's some pretty dark shows out there. That's true. Modern TV and yeah. like Breaking yeah. Bad kind of changed the game. <laughs> kind of a lighthearted romp compared, <laughs> yeah, compared to some to of these shows. The premium channels and yeah. Hulu is now just the competition's insane. And Hulu's yeah. running the. I love that Hulu has let this show be this tone and this identity. Mm -hmm. With Cloak and Dagger coming out and doing well, is that just helping this world kind of grow and grow and grow? Was that like an alley oop? Did that did that affect how you guys did moving forward? Yeah, I mean, both shows actually went into production around the same time. Okay, Cloak and Dagger had a delayed launch just because i guess the network that they're on got it um but we both kind of started independent of each other but it's nice to hear fans of one want to see crossover yeah and, mm -hmm. and um and that just means there's an audience there for this which means we get to keep telling these runaway stories yeah. which is awesome yeah and i love the cloak and dagger which i loved the whole time i was going like oh like the runaways right and i, I kind of liked that they had different releases so i had time to absorb runaways yeah. and then i felt like i was in that universe even though it was a different network when you built this world was the plan to establish a corner of the Marvel Universe that was yours, kind of like Netflix Daredevil had that, like, we established this world. When you were building the show, did you want, like, this is the Runaways verse? I think Los Angeles. That yeah. was the kind of the, the the piece of that that was unique to um, 
the Marvel world. There wasn't a lot of LA based, <laughs> you know, superheroes, uh, and certainly a distinction from the stuff on TV. Right. You know, that Hell's Kitchen kind of New York Netflix world. Um, so that was something that was really important to us, and that we've really been able, especially this year, to yeah. put on screen. Our kids live in Griffith Park. We're up there shooting all the time. We're shooting all around Hollywood and Echo Park and Silver Lake and downtown, and it really uh, imbues itself into the show. Yeah, just the, you know, L.A. being able to be a character mm -hmm. and doing a superhero show with blue skies and palm trees and beaches and Sunset Boulevard and Hollywood street life has been, it feels very unique in its own thing. Now, I, I don't know if you guys are reading the current comics. Uh, they feel like the characters you guys have, like the, mm -hmm. the evolution of it, like especially Chase. Chase feels like what Greg did with Chase, which oh. I love. Is that something that... As the world grows, do you want to like lean into the new comics, bounce back and forth? Are you following just the Brian K. Vaughn stuff? Like as the show develops, what's the plan? Without spoilers, yeah, yeah. Well, we still have, <laughs> we, we still have a lot in Brian's comic to explore. You yeah, know? Um, we have some some pretty big characters from that, those comics. Uh, some of whom will make an appearance this season, great, uh, and more to come. And so I think for now that's really what our focus is. But the response to the Rainbow. Uh, Rainbow's comic has been tremendous, and, mm -hmm. and they've really seems to have leaned into the Carolina and Nico yeah, I love romance, that. Yeah. which is something that we obviously did last year and continue to do this year. And so it's nice that there's that synchronicity between uh, the approach. Yeah, and I love that that's such a major moment that has translated like art imitating life, imitating art. Yeah, It's gone back to that world. Mm -hmm. uh, last question for you guys. The comic opens basically with them playing an Avengers video game, mm -hmm. and it, it establishes that world. Is it interestingly meta making a show where the Avengers in this Marvel universe that you're in is so predominant? Like when a Marvel movie comes out, are you like, oh, we're gonna go to set and work on a like a Marvel show? Is that is that is that an interesting like surreal driving around seeing billboards of your show next to these things? Does it feel like the comic? I mean, it's that happens in uh, Los Angeles and Hollywood <laughs> anyway. <laughs> where like, you find yourself bouncing between billboards, billboards, and like things that you know in real life and things that are representations. Um, in other in other things i think we feel like we live in our universe yeah our runaways universe but it's definitely pretty cool yeah and there's some seeds this year that kind of connect our world to the larger great Marvel world. Yeah. but we didn't we didn't want to be constrained by that because we wanted to feel like when our kids were discovering weird things about themselves yeah that they were kind of learning that for the you know they were kind of discovering that for the first time they didn't have the Avengers to call yeah, yeah, that's true. to help them, they were really all on their own. So, yeah. so we eschewed making kind of too many overt references to that world just because it, it made our characters' isolation all that much more dramatic. Right. But this year it'll be no breadcrumbs. Ryan, Ryan's a buddy and he wouldn't tell me anything, yeah. but he did say every time he, like, those would later be looked to him, like, yeah. and he just freak out. So I'm excited not knowing what those are to be like, the Easter egg. Like, I, I can't and wait. His comic stuff. for his cover. Get the cover. Awesome. Oh, I've got one. I immediately awesome. pre ordered him. So, like, he's yeah. got that Kevin Smith level of, like, Comic nerd gone big, yeah. so yeah. I'm so proud of them. Yeah. So yeah. thank you for making a show that's that's runaways tastic and like uh, the true uh, fans can really de dive into. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate yeah. it, guys. To see the Can't wait for this. Yeah. So I've been Koi Jandro. The cast is incredible. So many of them know and love comics. If you like this video, click like, subscribe for more, and hunt me down on Twitter at Koi Jandro. And thank you so much. I cannot wait for runaways. Appreciate it.